So this is the Junior Cert Ordinary Level Paper 1 from 2014 and we're looking at question number 10. Part A says factorise fully each of the following expressions. So part 1 we're asked to factorise 5x plus 10. Well, is there anything we can factor out of 5x and 10? Well the highest thing we could factor out is 5. So we put 5 on the outside of the bracket and if we factorise 5 out of this we're left with x. And if we factor 5 out of 10, we're left with positive 2. So quick check, 5 multiplied by x is 5x, 5 times 2 is plus 10. So that's the answer to part 1. Part 2, if we try and factorise something, we have 4 terms this time. But if we look across the 4 terms, there's no common factor to all 4 of them. There's nothing that we can factor out of all of them, apart from the number 1, which is pointless because you end up with the same things anyway. So if there's four terms, we can also always try pairing them. So if we look at the first pair here, and then look at the second pair here, we can see that there is common terms in the pairs. So our common factors in the, in the pairs. So if we look here at the first pair, we can see that C is in both of them. So we can factor C out of the first pair. So C, if we factor it out of the first one, we've got OR, and out of the second term, we have minus S. And now if we look at the next two terms, we can see that we have 2D in both of them. So we could factor positive 2D out of both of them. If we factor 2D out of this term, we're left with OR. If we factor 2d out of this term, we're left with minus s. So, this is good because this is saying, because we have the same thing in both brackets, in other words, c is multiplied by this blue thing, uh, plus 2d is multiplied by this blue thing, we can then shorten that again to say that the c plus d, 2d together. In other words, we put this c and this 2d in here. So I'll just show that with a highlighter here. So you have the, the c and the 2d. You can put them together in one bracket and say that both of these together are multiplied by this or minus s. And now we factorize the four terms into two brackets. So part three, we have to factorize x squared minus 16. Now again, we have two terms here, but there's no, no common factor in both of these. So what you should spot here, though, is that this is the difference of two squares, because the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 16 is 4. So the difference of two squares we, we know that it's just the square root of this minus the square root of this, which is x minus 4, multiplied by the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term. So the answer is x minus 4 bracket x plus 4, or you can write that backwards as x plus 4 bracket x minus 4. Either will, either will do. Okay, part B1 asks us to factorize x squared minus 5x plus 6. So again, when you look and try and factorize something out of the three terms, there's nothing that we can factor out of all three, again, apart from one, which is pointless. So you should spot now that this is a quadratic expression. The highest power of x is a 2, so you have a quadratic expression with, it's a trinomial, because there's 1, 2, 3. And when we're factorizing a quadratic trinomial, we have a way to do that. So the constant term at the end, we want factors for the constant term, positive 6. So factors of positive 6 that will add or subtract to give me negative 5, the coefficient of the x term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the factors of 6. So the factors of 6 that I can think of would be 3 by 2, 1 by 6. But I have to think of some negatives as well. So if it's positive 6, we could have minus 3 by minus 2. We could also have minus 1 by minus 6. So that's all the factor pairs I can think of. And we now ask ourselves, which of these factor pairs, when they're added or subtracted together, 
could give me this negative 5. Uh, what I spot is that if I'm trying to get negative 5, that would be minus 3 minus 2 would bring me to negative 5. And the minus 3 times the minus 2 also gives me positive 6 as well. So I can split this then into two brackets. Because I've x squared, it's always going to be x here and x here. And then I'm going to have x minus 3 in one bracket and x minus 2 in the other bracket. And that's the answer to B part 1. Part 2 says using your answer from B1 or otherwise, solve the equation x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. So this equation here, you can see the left hand side is the same as what we've just factorized. So that's why they're saying use your answer from B1. So if this is equal to 0, well, we've factorized that into x minus 3 bracket x minus 2, and we know that's equal to 0. So now, if two brackets multiply this bracket by this bracket give me 0, the only way that can be true is if one of the brackets is 0. So what we're going to do is a split screen here and imagine that the first bracket was 0. Imagine x minus 3 was 0. What would x be? Well, if x minus 3 is 0, x must be 3. So that's one solution. And if we look at the other bracket here, imagine x minus 2 was 0. If x minus 2 was 0, that would mean that x must be the number 2 for that to be true. So we have two answers, two solutions to this that would work. x equals 3 and x equals 2. And finally, part 3 says verify one of your answers from B part 2. So I'm going to take one of these answers and plug it back into this equation to verify that it works. So I'm going to take the number 2. So I'm going to rewrite the equation x squared minus 5x plus 6 is 0. If I just sub value 2 in here, that will give me 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6 equals 0. So I'm going to investigate if this is the case. So 2 squared, that's 4. Minus 5 by 2, well, that's minus 10. Plus 6 is 0. And we can see that 4 minus 10, that's minus 6. Plus 6 is 0. And minus 6 plus 6 is 0. So we can see there, 0 is equal to 0. So x equals 2 satisfies this equation. So I verified using one of the answers. You could also do the same with x is equal to 3. And that's the end of the question.